recorded by Jewish historian Josephus that Emmaus and Jerusalem could well be the place earlier called Ayalon, the place where the sun stood still until General Joshua's battle with the Amorites ended in victory. On the third day after Pesach Passover in the year 4 BCE, something also happened there that day. Two men, distressed, discouraged, and defeated at the terrible death of their leader and friend, Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth, walked back home to Emmaus village from the terror of that day three days ago. As they walked on the road discussing the events, they were joined by a man who didn't seem to know of recent events in Jerusalem, but who did seem to have answers to the man's pointed questions about the event, explaining who the Messiah was from Moses. This is the path we tread, the ancient path from Moses to Messiah, tracing our steps from the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith to the road of Emmaus village to the 21st century today. Rev Media presents The Road to Emmaus Village Studies of the Complete Gospel from Moses, the Prophets and the Psalms The Torah, Nebi'im and Ketubim To Messiah in the Brit Hadashah In the Hebraic perspective of our Christian faith This is the continuing account of that happy day. As they came to Cleophas Alpheus' house, they bade him stay the night and sit with us at the evening meal. Then the man took up the piece of matzah, made the baraka, blessed the father for the meal, broke it and handed it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened. Then the man disappeared. They leapt to their feet, headed toward the door, talking excitedly, saying, Didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us on the road? Opening up the Tanakh to us, we must tell the others. They raced back toward Jerusalem to tell the eleven and the rest of their brethren huddled together at an upper room away from the Roman authorities. At High Helon, where the long overnight battle of Joshua ended in the defeat of the Amorites, the sun stood still as a witness to the victory won there. At Amaus, in proclamation of his victory, Yeshua Jesus opened the eyes of the men to who he is down through history from Moses, the Messiah of Israel. There we believe that time and eternity met when Messiah bridged the connection between his eternal I am and his divine conquest and victory as the risen son of God on earth. Walk with us on our journey in the road to Amaus village. Shalom. Let us begin by expressing our utmost thanks to Abba, our Father, His Son, Yeshua Mashiach, Adonai, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, the Rak HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Also, thanks to our dear friends who have encouraged us to put together this weekly Yeshua-centered Messianic educational TV program, The Road to Amaos Village, which goes on the air Saturdays every Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Bereshit or Genesis 2-3, Shabbat blessings be upon us, you and your family. Let's honor Abba and set this day apart with this prayer. Blessed art thou, o Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us and enabled us to reach this season. In Yeshua Hamasiah's name, Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sheheche Yanu Vekeye Manu Vehizeye Anu Lazman Hase Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach Amen As it happened to the two disciples on the road to Amaus village Even if we have been Christians long So must we allow the Jewish Jesus himself Yeshua HaMashiach to approach us and travel with us in our spiritual and earthly journey. 
This is so that we may fully understand through his Hebraic perspective, his teachings and correctly in context, apply this to our lives and realize didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us. My wife and I have been born from above since 1982, but our eyes were not open to recognize Yeshua in all his Jewishness until six years ago. We had no idea that Jesus Yeshua was Torah observant, that he knew the Shema by heart, that he observed the Shabbat and the Moedim feast, that he was kosher in his diet, and so many other things he did and taught that we didn't see without the Hebraic perspective. We were like air plants hung in the air, not rooted in the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To mention an important observation, Yeshua Jesus was definitely not a Torah or lawbreaker, as some argue, but that he indeed is the living Torah and the Torah is all about him. Because of the major errors decreed by Emperor Constantine in 325 AD and many other false non-biblical beliefs, traditions and practices that have crept into the church, making it drift far from its Hebraic roots, so were we in our thought and actions. A man named Marshawn, even extreme, wanting the entire Hebrew scriptures, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, trashed and not included as God's word. Also, there are the anti-Semitic or anti-Jews throughout history, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the Holocaust, and now the neo-Nazis and Iran. This is a grave tendency even today, when study of scripture is not done in the right perspective, in the balance, in the whole counsel of God, in the light of the Brit Hadasha, from Bereshit Genesis to Hitgalut, Revelation, the end from the beginning. That's why in the church, some are espousing the replacement theology doctrine, that God is finished with the Jews, and that the church is now the spiritual Israel. God does not expect us, nor does he want us to become Jews, in fact, it is impossible for a Gentile to become one. Rather, what God desires is that the nations will come to worship the God of Israel, proving that He is the God not only of the Jews, but of all peoples. To correct this, let us cite Romans 11, 1, 2. Paul or Rav Shaul or Rabbi Shaul says, I say then, God has not rejected His people, has He? May it never be, for I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Yes, the Jews remain the apple of God's eye. Earlier in Romans 9, reading from the CJB or Complete Jewish Bible Translation, Rav Shaul says, I am speaking the truth as one who belongs to the Messiah, governed by the Ruach HaKodesh. My grief is so great that I could wish myself under God's curse and separated from the Messiah. If it would help my brothers, my own flesh and blood, the people of Israel, he stresses, they were made God's children. The Shekinah has been with them. The covenants are theirs. Likewise, the giving of the Torah, the temple service, and the promises. The patriarchs are theirs. And from them, as far as his physical descent is concerned, came the Messiah, who is over all. Praise be Adonai forever. Amen. This is what we will discover together. The Hebraic roots of our Christian faith, from Moshe or Moses to the road to Amal's village to Messiah, in the balance. Briefly, Rav Shaul also in Romans 11 gives us an analogy of the good olive tree. The roots are the faith of Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and the pre-incarnate Christ. The branches that remain are the apostles, the disciples or Talmudim of Yeshua, the multitude who believed in him, those who welcomed him with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hoshiana, Lord, save us! The 3,000 that were added after Shavuot, Pentecost, including the Kohanim, the priests in Acts, the present-day Messianic Jews like Rabbi Daniel Vargas, our founder at the Ends of the Earth Prayer Tower, Beth Israel Jewish Ministries International, and the thousands in Israel, some 25,000 of them, and throughout the world, close to half a million now born from above Messianic Jews. The cut branches are those Jews, mind you, not all, who rejected Yeshua as the Messiah. The grafted in branches from the wild olive tree are us, the Goyim, the nations, the Christians, Gentile, once pagan, now believers in Yeshua HaMashiach. And finally, the good olive tree is Yeshua HaMashiach himself. Further, Rav Shaul warns the Gentile beloved of God in Rome, Do not be arrogant towards the cut and attached branches. 
But if you are, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the rich root supports you. Have you ever wondered why at times you feel like you are drifting up, drying up in your spiritual walk, disappointed, discontented, disconnected, once asking myself this question, is this all to it? No doubt what is preached from the pulpit is God's word from the New Testament, but is this all to it? It is, if it is not connected to its Hebraic roots. Have you examined closely which root you are drawing sustenance from? Are you sure you are grafted in the good olive tree of the Jesus, Jewish Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach? Praise God for this end-time move of the Ruach HaKodesh, for opening the spiritual eyes and ears, not only of the Jewish people, but also of us, freeing us from our biases, giving us progressive revelation, equipping us for evangelism, to witness to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, that we, as the Israel of God, not just any ordinary Jew and Gentile, but Messianic Jew and born from above Gentile, may be one in Messiah, the one new man in Yeshua Mashiach, the living Torah. This is his end time plan. Next week, we will learn more about the Torah, what it is, is Torah law? What about Yeshua and the Torah? Was he a lawbreaker, as some say? Is the Torah for Christians? To be Talmudim or true disciples of Yeshua Mashiach, we must know the Torah that we may be rooted in the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith. According to the Torah, following its biblical calendar, today ends the eight-day celebration or observance of the Feast of the Lord's Pesach, Passover, and Matzah, Unleavened Bread. We have grown accustomed to celebrating feasts, man-made mostly from other calendars. However, in this program, we will learn what the biblical appointed feasts of the Lord are. Road to Emmaus Village and Rev Media greet everyone. Hag Pesach Samea. Happy Passover. Yeshua, our Passover lamb is risen and will very soon come again. Messianic biblical scholars say he will come back also during one of the feasts of the day and hour, no one knows. However, as we study his biblical appointed feast, we can discern the season. Find out more as you watch this program, Saturdays every Shabbat. In the next portion, my wife Beth and I are blessed to have our dear friend and true yoke fellow from New Jersey, New York, USA, born from above Jew, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, help open our eyes in the end from the beginning study to this biblical feast of Adonai, Pesach. Pass over. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 Kings Highway from Genesis through the Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular Parash reading. Section 1, the Torah. Section 2, how this Parash fits in the New Testament. Section 3, for our future, and the end of days, and the Messiah's return. Part 1, Parash Pesach, Passover, the Last Supper. It begins with the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, we look at Exodus chapter 12 verse 2 speaks about the beginning of the year. Remember, God set up years the way he wanted, months the way he wanted. He does not look to man. God established everything the way he wanted. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 2, you are to begin your calendar with this month. 
It will be the first month of the year for you. So God is saying that Pesach, Passover, is going to be the first month for the year for us. It's very important. We'll look at it later in a moment. In verse 3, the Lord talks about us bringing a lamb to our Father's house. That we are to bring a lamb, a perfect lamb, for the offering that was going to be given for Passover when we're going to leave Egypt that next day. But the lamb had to be brought to the Father's house, specifically the Father's house. The Lord then goes on to say in verse 6 and 7, on the 14th day of the month, you're to slaughter that animal, but then put some of its blood, its blood, the animal's blood, the lamb of God's blood, the lamb that was going to be slaughtered for us to be redeemed from slavery, you were going to put the blood on the door here, here, and here. Specifically, three places he was talking about. That you would put blood on your door in three places. One, two, three. In verse 14 of chapter 12 of the book of Exodus, the Lord then says that you are to do this ceremony, this holy day, this day from generation to generation, a perpetual regulation, or in the Hebrew, the word oyam, forever. Now, we're not going to stop it, that we're going to keep doing it from the time the Lord gave us this until this very day we do celebrate the Lord's Pesach, Passover, the Last Supper. Verse 49 says that this law is not only for we, the Jewish people, but to the Gentile or the foreigner, the Goyim, living amongst us. Okay, now we move on to section two. Section two is do you find these things in the Potadasha, the New Testament? Okay, we read earlier Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3, it talks about bringing the lamb to the Father's house. Now in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 7 through 9, it talks about Yeshua's triumphant return. Yeshua is Jesus the Messiah. That's his real Hebrew name. Okay? Yeshua comes in to Jerusalem, the holy city. Now that is the Father's house, where the Father's temple would be built. So here the crowd was waving the palm branches and saying, Hoshiana, Hoshiana, Ben David, Hosanna to you in the highest. Okay, remember Matthew chapter 21, verse 7 to 9. He was going into his father's house. What did Yochanan, John, his cousin, call him? The Lamb of God, remember? So the Lamb of God was being brought to the father's house four days before the Passover just like the lamb would be brought to our house four days before the Passover. Now we read in Exodus chapter 12, verse 7, remember we read about putting the blood on the door in three places. We put it here, here, and here, one above our head. Okay? When Yeshua went to the cross in Matthew chapter 27, verse 31, where was he nailed to the cross, which is wood. And what was, where did we put the blood on our door? Which is wood. Where was Yeshua nailed? Here, here, and he had one in the feet. But what did they put on his head? A crown of thorns, which made blood pour out from his head. So here, we put the blood here, here, and here at Passover, when Messiah was on the cross, he had blood here, here, and on his head. Okay, so I had the three places. Then we looked at Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, where it said, from generation to generation, or, in other words, forever. So the fulfilling here is when you look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 19, and Yeshua is sitting down at the Last Supper or a Passover meal. Remember, Yeshua, Jesus is saying yesterday, today, and forever. He's Jewish. All the Talmudim, they're Jewish. So Luke is accounting here that Yeshua sat down for his last supper, a Passover meal, and he says specifically in verse 19, he took a piece of matzah, 
Um, but there's no bread on the table during the Feast of Matzah. Although the Da Vinci painting is beautiful, it has dinner rolls on the table, and there would be no bread in the house of a Jewish home. So here he broke a piece of matzah, and then he goes on to say in verse 19, do this in remembrance of him. Okay, so here we have a perpetual regulation that the Lord talked about in Exodus, and Yeshua is reconfirming it. And finally, in verse 49 of Exodus 12 that we read, it said this is to the foreigner also, not just the Jewish person, it is for the foreigner also. Okay? So here we have Luke 22:19 saying, do this forever. Okay? So Yeshua is saying, for the Jew and the Gentile, from Romans 11, you're grafted into the Hebrew olive tree. Okay? So you're to do this forever. Now finally, part three, where we see that does this have an, an implication for us? Okay, well, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, we read that this is the beginning of the year. Why is that important? Because the prophecy in Zechariah 14, verse 16 and 17, says that those people of all the nations in the end of time that do not come up for the feast of Sukkot will get no rain for the land. Well, if you didn't know when the beginning of the year was with Passover, you certainly won't know when the seventh month is. And if you don't go up to Israel in these final days, you'll get no rain for your land. This has been a brief overview of Parash Pesach. to Amau's village to discuss this parasha in the light of the Brit, the Torah in the balance. With me is Dr. Manny Navarro, elder of Solid Torah Community. Shalom, Brother Manny. Shalom, Brother Oni. Hi, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. Picking up from where we left off on the road to Amau's and after listening to Rabbi Andrew, a thought-provoking question is, do you think the two disciples would have recognized Yeshua as the Pesach, the Passover lamb? Well, I think you're referring to Luke chapter 24, which would be the last chapter in Luke. Uh, for me, this has always been a depressing episode in the book of Luke until, of course, uh, Yeshua Mashiach reveals himself to the two disciples later on. Now, after all that Jesus Christ had said and done at the end of the long gospel, they still didn't know who Jesus Christ was. This is really depressing, and we can see from the tone of their discourse that it is undergirded with sadness and 
I think that at this point in time, Jesus Christ was a fast fading uh, memory. And they were trying to recall as much as mm -hmm. they could of him, grasping for some straw or for some glimmerings of hope that he was the one whom they had all hoped that he would be, the political messiah of Israel. Probably the fault is not fully their own, but we must understand that as being Jewish persons, they were brought up in a religion that had so been altered by rabbinical teachings, Pharisees, yes. so that they could no longer see the essence of the Torah. And of course, rabbinical Judaistic religion did not make any allowance for seeing this person who called himself the Son of God as relating to the prophecies of the Old Testament or the Tanakh. So, the end result yeah. would be blindness. There were scales on their eyes. When they looked at Jesus, there was a veil over their eyes. They didn't know who he was, so they but were debating him. How then, uh, John the Baptist, as he is uh, normally called, your Canaan de Mercer, uh, yeah. when he saw Yeshua passing by, he addressed him as, Behold, the Passover lamb who takes away the sins of the world. All right, John the Baptist was also a Jewish person, but he didn't see Yeshua from the rabbinical or pharisaical mm -hmm. point of view. He saw him from the Torah perspective. And so he was able to relate the Torah to the persona of Jesus Christ. In the Torah, especially yeah. the middle book, the book of Leviticus, which is so very important, we have the first seven chapters dealing with animal sacrifices in the tabernacle, which yeah. would later be practiced in the temple. Now, the animals that were brought by the offerers to the tabernacle in Moses' time were, according to God's dictate, supposed to be the best, the purest yes. among the no flock or the herd. No defect, no fractures, no broken yeah. bones, not blind, not lame, not halt, not having any discharges. And look at Yeshua, the perfect man. He was actually the reality that all of these animal sacrifices, all these pure animals, all this clean meat was pointing to. And so John understood that he was the Lamb of God. Most of the sacrifices that were done in the tabernacle and in the temple were sacrifices of lambs because yeah. this was the kind of animal that the common people would offer in the tabernacle yeah. and in the temple. For the priests, it was a bullock. If he had sinned, it was a bullock. Mm. For a leader, it was a ram or a goat. And for the community, it was a bull. Yeah, but uh, as in Hebrews, the blood of these animals could not remove the sin. You know? Definitely. Yes. It could cover the sins, but it could not take away the memory forever. Yes. Thank you very, very much, Brother Manny, for this interesting discussion. Could I request you to lead us in a prayer that others may recognize and accept Yeshua as the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world? Yes. Uh, dear viewers, there is a beautiful verse in the book of Matthew where Yeshua is speaking to our hearts, especially those of us who are burdened with life. And you know the cause for the burden in your life is the innate sinfulness of every human being. He says, come unto me, all you who are toiling mm -hmm. and loaded down, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is kindly and my load is light. Don't take your life into your own hands. Give it to Yeshua. Yeshua is the lamb who died for you 2,000 years ago. His blood will cleanse you of your sins, past, present, and future. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to share in the life of the Son of God, eternal life, please pray this prayer with me. Okay. Shall we bow our heads? God of Abraham, God of Yitzhak, God of Yaakov, I acknowledge that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is the only Son that you sent for our salvation and for our redemption. His blood cleanses me from all my sins. I repent of all the sins that I have committed. I accept you, Yeshua, as my Lord and Savior. Please come and sit at the throne of my heart. Even at this moment, I thank you for the forgiveness of all my sins. I thank you, Paschal Lamb of God, Yeshua, 
who has covered all my sins forevermore. In Yeshua HaMashiach, I rejoice and start a new life in His life. Amen. Amen. That was wonderful, Brother Manny. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing with us your thoughts on Yeshua as the Pesach Lamb through a Hebraic perspective. That was a short and sweet time with our Yeshua. We'll see you again here, same time, Shabbat next week, to search the scriptures and receive the blessings of the Shabbat from our Adonai Shabbat, Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus our Messiah. This has been your host, Brother Oni, extending to you Adonai's ironic blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Ivereka Adonai Vayishmereka Ya'er Adonai Panav Eleka Viku Neka Yisa Adonai Panav Eleka Vayashem Reka Shalom Bashem Sar HaShalom Yeshua HaMashiach Amen. Shavua Tov. A blessed week ahead of you. Shalom. Thank you. We worship you, O Lord. For you alone are worthy to receive all honor and praise. You are highly exalted.